Ajayang Gupta, I hope I'm saying that right, Ajayang Gupta asked me a question in the comments of my last video, my cinematic poker b-roll that I shot of myself. So he asked, could you upload a video on how you edit and find music for such b-rolls? And that's a great question, so let's try to answer that in today's video. I'll show you where I got the music for that poker b-roll and I'll also give you some editing tips that I used specifically for that b-roll. Music is super important guys, what you hear is just as important as what you see because it helps you to understand the story and if you'd edit the same video to different music tracks you'll end up with completely different videos and that's exactly what I did with my poker b-roll. I might have exaggerated just a little bit but just to show you what I mean, here's the original first. Okay, now hold that feeling, hold that vibe. Here's the same video, but with a different music track. So that's what music does, it can make or break your video or make it a completely different video depending on what kind of music track you choose. Now the problem is that it's a very subjective process, super subjective, choosing the right music for your video. I think you can definitely learn it, but it'll be easier for people who already have that feel for music, you know what I mean? I love the process of listening to different music tracks for hours just to make sure that I pick the right one. Even though sometimes it can be super frustrating, especially when you're just starting out and you're making your first videos. But luckily, a lot of the services that provide music for creators and filmmakers offer some tools to make it easier to pick the right kind of music. I use a few different services, but for this specific video, that poker b-roll, I used a track from Artlist.io. And this video is also partnered with Artlist. Now, the difference between Artlist and a lot of other services is that Artlist has just one worldwide universal license. So the same license for personal use, YouTube videos, as well as commercial use. And once you download a song or a sound effect with an active subscription, it's yours to use forever, even if you don't resubscribe. I used YouTube's audio library in the beginning and it was great. But the problem of course is that after a while, you'll end up with the same songs and you might feel like a free library is too limited. That's how it went for me. But then I started to make some money and then I decided to use these music services. It just opens up the range of music you can use and also you can find a lot more quality tracks. In a free library, you can find some quality tracks in a paid service, there's a lot of quality. And to pick the right song is, like I said, a very, very subjective process. If you and me want the same vibe, the same mood for a video, we'll still probably end up using different music tracks. Maybe you'll use rock music and I'll use funk. I mean, it's not like there's just one perfect choice for a video. It all depends on what you want the video to feel like and your personal taste in music. Also very important. On Artlist, you can filter on a bunch of different keywords. Most of the time, I use mood and just mood. I don't like to use genre or instrument unless it's for a very specific project, but I usually stick with mood because I like to be surprised. 
I'm not a fan of just one genre of music. Now, the tempo filter up here, that's very useful if you know already that you want a fast paced or a slow video. So for my poker b-roll for example, I put powerful and epic, that's what I wanted. I could feel it before I even made the video. And then my friends, I have to disappoint you, but then I just start listening to all the music tracks. And it can take a while, because like I said, I like to be surprised. I'm not going for the first one that comes up. And again, there's not one perfect song for that video that you're making. Sometimes, in my case, it takes a few hours. Now, if you don't like to spend that much time on picking a song, you can narrow down all those filters and make the process a bit faster. But there's not one specific tip I can give you for choosing the perfect music track. Because, yeah, it doesn't work like that. It's something you have to learn by just doing it a lot, like composition. The most important thing is that, in the end, everything has to come together. So the music, the cuts, the visuals, the lighting, all of that has to feel like it's one story. It has to feel right, you know what I mean? And I know you probably wanted some more specific tips on choosing music, but... Yeah, I can't give them to you. Maybe there is one tip, something that I always try to do, and that's stay away from what's already been done. Try to find something new, something fresh, something that will make the people go, huh. Okay, and now a few editing tips, some specific ones that I used for my poker b-roll. Now, when it comes to editing to music, the simplest way is to make cuts on the beat. If you're just starting out, that's the way to go. Now, of course, that's not a rule. You can also make cuts in between beats, but then you're gonna make it a little bit more difficult for yourself. So, start with on the beat. Okay, now a few things I did here in my poker b-roll. First of all, I made the music start here and not here at the beginning of the video. Because the music starts in a very specific way with like almost a sound effect, that high pitched, yeah, I don't know what to call it. This, this sound. And I used that beginning to emphasize a speed ramp right here, closing in on the, the little box of cards. Now, because there's nothing in the beginning here and you don't want it to be completely silent, that sounds really weird, I added a hum, a humming sound effect. But here's the thing, I really liked that first second of the music track, that sound effect. And I liked it so much that I copy pasted it and I used it as a sound effect later on in the video. So you can hear that same sound here again. And here too. So you don't always need sound effects, sometimes the music itself has sound effects that you can use. And then the second tip is a classic, make sure to edit your music. You can cut your music into different pieces, paste them back together without anyone noticing it. Here I wanted that intro of the music, that heartbeat sound to last a little bit longer. So I made a cut and I just added some more of that intro sound and pasted it back together. Perfect. This also works if you have a short video and you want to use the end of the music for the end of your video. Music and video are usually not the same length, so just cut it up and make it fit. And then the third tip is a stylistic effect. Is that what you call it? So I don't know, but for some extra drama, a lot of times it works if all of a sudden you stop the music. That's what I did here. And then you start the music again at a high, you know, where it reached its full epicness. Full epicness. And that's it for today, guys. Music. So you really have to develop some kind of feel for it. And that's the problem, because I think editing to music is one of the most difficult things to learn to someone. I think it's something that you have to learn by just doing it a lot and listening a lot to music, watching a lot of videos, listening to the music and see what other people did, how they cut the music to the video or the video to the music and then slowly you'll develop that feel for music and you'll be able to just cut it up however you want. And remember, it's totally fine to use free music if you're starting out or if you don't have the budget right now. You can learn everything with free music and then later on when you're like, hmm, it's getting too limited now, pay for a service like Artlist. 
Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.